Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, the conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. Hashtag live if you're joining during the 7 o'clock hour, Central Standard Time. Hashtag recorded if you're joining at any other time. And hashtag shared and put this out on your pages if you will put this uh, or invite out to your friends and family. So if they follow the Pastor Doug page, they can uh, like it. And then they'll get notifications when we go live. And I know some of you aren't getting notifications, though you follow the Pastor Doug page. Facebook is a unique thing. <laughs> Facebook decides when and what and where they're going to. Nicole Gibbs wants to join on the video. I think you probably hit that accidentally. But if you want to join me on Pray First, I will be glad to have you here. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Greg. Hi, Stephen and Adonis. Hi, Leanne. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, uh, Dr. Potts. Good morning, Lana Casarino. Lana Casarino is now a pilot of the people mover here at Cross Point Church. I have a picture of Lana Casarino jumping a hill on the six-seater golf cart out there in beside beside the church on Keister Street. Be careful out there. Good morning, Yasser from Pakistan. Good morning, George uh, from Uganda. Good morning, Tafarius T. Payne Smith. Good morning, Whitley. Good morning, Tasha. Good morning, Michelle. Hit those hearts, hit those likes. Go crazy on those and let all of our first-time guests know that you are glad that they are here. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Kat. Cat Salyers, where where in the world are you located now? I mean, you kind of like drift all around the planet. Good morning, Neil Hedges. Good morning, everybody. Come on, hit those hearts, hit those likes. If you're joining us right now, maybe for the first time, and you're seeing those thumb emojis and those heart emojis go up the side of your devices, that's our Pray First family welcoming you. Good morning, Ann Pritchard. Good morning, Sharon Worsham. Uh, yeah, Atlanta, we saw you jumping curves. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, how about that? Yesterday we had a Pray First shout out <laughs> in the Cross Point services. We sure did. Just saying hello to all of our online folks. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Randall. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Dustin. So today we are going to talk about the uh, importance of having a teachable spirit. The importance of having a teachable spirit. When God begins to talk to you, uh, he's going to be giving you some, some very valuable um, wisdom. Wisdom equals value. Value equals wisdom. As you begin to get in God's Word, as you begin to read what He has written to us, the instruction, the reproof, the correction, the encouragement, as you begin to read that, God's going to begin to breathe life into your spirit. Now, your soul and body is still uh, waiting to be saved. Uh, you're a three-part being. Your spirit, when you receive Jesus Christ and you are born again, your spirit uh, is saved. Your soul is being saved, and your body one day will be saved. So as you begin to read the general will of God, and you begin to read the general instructions of God, he will begin to talk with you and give you specific will. And, and his specific word will begin to come to life inside of you, and he will begin to instruct you, encourage you, correct you. Come on. He will begin to reprove. He will begin to refine. His word will begin to penetrate deep within you, and he will give you wisdom. Everybody in the room, hashtag wisdom. The value of wisdom as God begins to speak to you. So we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1 in three different versions of the Bible. Uh, if you do not uh, look at these verses in different versions, you're missing out uh, because it may have one little tweak to the phrase and it opens up what you're thinking. The parallel Bibles have several different versions that you can read at the same time or you can do it online on the Blue Letter Bible app. So let's look at wisdom today because God is speaking to you. I want you to understand that that wisdom he's giving you is valuable and it should be valued. Proverbs 12, 1. This is Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, with the exception being the Son of God. 
Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. As God is speaking to you through his word, as God is speaking to you through his voice, whoever loves that voice, whoever loves that word, whoever loves that instruction loves knowledge. But, Solomon contrasts, he who hates correction is stupid. Now, I didn't say stupid. Solomon said stupid. So I'm going to read this verse again. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. That is the New King James Version of Proverbs 12.1. Let's look at the New Living Translation of Proverbs 12.1. To learn, you must love discipline. To learn, to learn something, you must love discipline. Listen to how he juxtaposes this. It is stupid to hate correction. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not love correction, but I do know that I need correction. I do not love being wrong, but I do love when God changes my mind about something. I do love when God doesn't just tell me that's wrong, but he shares his feeling about it being wrong or me being wrong or my, my thinking process, my thought process being wrong. I love it when God gives me his thought process, when he gives me his love, when he gives me his discipline, when he gives me his correction, when he gives me his encouragement, when he gives me his worldview, when he gives me his eyes to see. Uh, what someone else is going through and who they are and why they think and why they do the things that they do. Proverbs 12, 1 in the New Living Translation says, to learn, you must love discipline. It, it is stupid to hate correction. One more translation of this same verse. If you're going to be a disciple, Anne's right. We are going, Ann Pritchard, you are absolutely right. If you're going to be a disciple, you're going to have to be open to God's instruction and God's correction. That's what, that's what being a disciple is. Proverbs 12, 1 in the message. If you love learning, you love the discipline that goes with it. <laughs> Have you ever found that to be true? When you begin, when God gives you a word or when God uh, uh, instructs you or encourages you, uh, there is, uh, there's a certain amount of discipline that goes with it. You're not by default just loving all the time. You're not by default forgiving all the time. You're not by default um, kind all the time. Uh, but God's word instructs us in the ways of, of God and the ways of disciple, and it disciplines us. So let's read this again in the message. If you love learning, you will love the discipline that goes with it. How short-sighted to refuse correction. Solomon says if a person refuses to be corrected, or they're right all the time, or they cannot be uh, found wrong or lacking or wanting. Solomon says they're stupid. He says, but if you love knowledge, you'll be wise. So what if God came to you uh, through his word or through his voice, his logos or his rhema, logos being written word, his rhema being spoken word. What if God came to you and, and asked you to change your mind about something? What if God come to you and, and ask you through his word, his written or his spoken word, that would you change your mind in this area? Would you change the way you think in this area? Would you allow me to challenge uh, your position in this area? Maybe it's, it's racism. Maybe it's forgiveness or unforgiveness. Maybe it's that message that uh, your pastor preached and you're like, you know, 90-something percent of the time he's on, but boy, he was off. It's 10 percent. I just don't agree with that. How many times, if not just your pastor, but when you read something or you hear something or you feel the Lord say something and, and you just have dug in and become uh, stubborn that this is how what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to think, and, and you even ask, I had someone ask me for advice yesterday and, and just say, you know, I don't really need your advice. 
but I gave them my advice. Is there any place in your life where you've just dug in your heels and you've made a decision and God's over there trying to change your position? What, what, what would you do if, if God asked you to change your mind about something you've grown stubborn about? I mean, I'm going to follow him 75% of the time, but this 25%, I'm just not going to give God that area of my life. I'm not going to give God uh, that relationship that I'm living in adultery in. I'm just not going to give him that part of me. He's, he's trying to change my mind in that area. I'm just not going to change my mind. Um, the Lord's trying to change your mind maybe in your finances. I'm not going to change my mind in my finances. I'm, I'm going to follow him with everything else, but I'm certainly not going to tithe. Uh, maybe God's trying to change your mind about a certain political group and you've just dug your heels in and you're just going to be stubborn and, and you're just not going to love and forgive. You're not going to share. Maybe you've dug your heels in in the area of your ex-spouse or your, you know, your neighbor or someone that you just... What area of your life, what have you grown stubborn about? What if God asked you to change your mind about that? Very few times, listen to this, this is so important. Very few times is God trying to change your location or change what you're doing. Most of the time, God is trying to get you to change your mind about where you are and about what you're doing. He's trying to change your mindset. Most of the time, God's word is trying not to change where you are or what you're doing. God's word is trying to change how you look at what you're doing or what you're seeing. He's not trying to change where you are. He's not trying to change what you're doing. He's trying to change the way you think about where you are and change how you think about what you're going through. So many times. Solomon became the wisest man in the world, guys. Ann, Larry, Tasha, Pam, uh, Raymond, Neil, Stephen. Solomon became the wisest man in the world by responding to God's wisdom. By responding to God's wisdom. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 3. And it's a fairly lengthy passage, so I'm going to read it fairly quickly. 1 Kings 3, chapter, verse 1. Now Solomon made a treaty, this is Solomon, the son of David, the wisest man in the, in, in the world. Now we know that when God said you can have anything, that Solomon asked for wisdom, but, but do you know why he asked for wisdom? Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the people sacrificed at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father's, father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. God didn't like that. That's where idols were worshipped. Other idols, other gods, small g. Verse 4. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. Solomon went there, for that, was, for that was a great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar at Gibeon, and the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? What shall I give you? Can you imagine God asking, just ask anything. What shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Verse 7. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous and numbered, or to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart. Everybody hashtag understanding. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me instruction. Cause the way I think to be the way you think. That's what Solomon's asking for. An understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? 
The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself, nor have asked for riches for yourself, nor did you ask that your enemies be killed, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there will be none like you, not before nor after. And also I have given what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all of your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commands as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Listen to verse 7 again and verse 8. Now, O Lord, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. Okay. If you could ask God anything, if, if, you, if, he would, if he would open that invitation up to you and say, you can ask of anything you want, what would you ask for? Don't say wisdom. I mean, that, I know that. That's what we just talked about. But just think about that today. If you could ask God for anything, and he just offered that, what would you ask for? What, what, would, what, would, what would be your petition? If God asked you for anything, I want you to just to listen to this, and I'm going to pray for you. Today's just kind of a, a very simple day to begin this conversation about the value of the wisdom of God, that God's not trying to change where you are or what you're going through. God's trying to change your mind about where you are and what you're going through. God's trying to change the way you think about where you are and what you're going through. Solomon didn't ask God to change his circumstances or his surroundings. Solomon asked God to change the way he thought about his circumstances and surroundings. That's hard, isn't it? When you are dealing with difficult people, it would be much easier to ask God to change where you are. When you're, when you're dealing with frustration, it would be so much easier to ask God, please change my circumstance. Please change where I am. Don't leave me in this position where this difficult person is. Don't leave me at this job where I'm surrounded by darkness and, and no one's a follower of Christ. Lord, change where I work. Change, change my circumstance. That's not what God's trying to do in us. What God is trying to do in us is change the way we think about the difficult people. Change the way we think about the darkness. Change the way we think about where we are and what we're going through. A teachable spirit is something of great worth. It's something of great value. More than any other thing you, require, you can acquire, a teachable spirit is the most valuable. The difference between many people who succeed and many people who fail, listen to me closely, the difference between many people who will succeed in life, who will succeed in faith, who will succeed as a disciple of Christ, who will succeed as a son or daughter of Christ, the difference between those who succeed and fail is not aptitude, it's attitude. Everybody hashtag attitude. The difference in people who succeed and the people who fail, it's not because someone is gifted that they succeed. Everyone's gifted. But some people are teachable. Some people are able to be corrected. Some people are uh, more easy to, 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 to encourage. Everyone's gifted, but everyone doesn't have what it takes to succeed because they are unteachable, they have bad attitudes, they think they know everything, and here's the final one. Most people don't succeed because they quit and because they run away, and because they stop. And rather than listen to God trying to change how they think, they decide, I'm going to change where I am, and I'm going to change my circumstances. They don't, however, change where they are or their circumstances because they keep ending up everywhere they go to. And they'll quit, 
and they'll run. And God is saying, listen, no, no, no. I want you to stick. I want you to stay. I want you to allow me to work what I'm trying to work out of you. You can't have any, listen, that person, you have anybody that brings the worst out of you? I mean, every time you're around them, it brings the worst out of you. Here's the deal. Uh, no one can bring anything out of you that's not already inside of you. I can't shake this bottle and Pepsi come out. I can't shake this bottle and Diet Coke come out. I can't shake this bottle and coffee come out. There is no uh, Pepsi. There is no Diet Coke. There is no coffee in this bottle. If I shake this bottle, I can only bring out what's in this bottle. And what's in this water bottle is water. They just bring the worst out of me. They can't bring the worst out of you if there's no worst in you. God is trying to bring the worst out. He's trying to, uh, he's trying to give you wisdom. Now, let me say this and I want to pray for you. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you're going to have to be teachable. <sighs> to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you're going to have to be teachable because disciple means learner. Our whole lives following Jesus will be about learning things we did not know and learning to love the unlovable, learning to forgive the unforgivable, learning to see people like God sees people. God wants to give you wisdom. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person listening because, look, everybody out there thinks I'm talking to them, but I am talking to me. And I am talking to you. I had someone ask, surely you weren't talking to me the other day. And I said, absolutely, I was talking to you. And I was talking to me and I was talking to all of us. God's word is trying to give us wisdom. Right here. And it's not easy. Sometimes it can be frustrating. And that's why I ask God, God, give us today. Give us today. Lord, give us today your eyes to see. Lord, give us today your ears to hear. Lord, give us your heart to love. Lord, give us your heart to forgive. Lord, give us your heart uh, to persevere. Lord, give us your mind to think. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. God is really, really focused right now on the way we respond to what we hear him say how we steward what we already know to be true so that he can multiply what we don't. So that if we ignore what he's given us, the talents, the treasure, the wisdom, the word, he'll take what we, what we already had away. And we don't need to lose any of that because Lord knows it's not getting easier in this world. It's getting much more difficult. I'll see you guys back tomorrow. Bye, everybody.